What up, everyone? MCI ADP Studios, Mixing It Up Podcast, Episode 4, and I got with me Mr. Maxavelli himself, Tony Capo. Appreciate you coming on the show, bro. No problem, man. Anytime. Uh, I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer. You guys, uh, if you follow anything with EDP, you know we're always working together and stuff. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So he's always here. Actually, it's kind of funny that you're the fourth guest on the podcast because it seems like you would be number one. But uh, yeah. we just got around to it. We're working on other shit. So, I mean, we're dropping, what, bar videos. We're in the studio working on music like every other weekend. So, yeah, we definitely got a lot of shit going on. So the podcast was going to happen, but it's just, you know. Go ahead and do your thing. and Right, yeah, yeah. Um, you will talk a little more about those bar videos and stuff, too, because I um, feel you guys in on, what, on what's actually going on with Capo. But this isn't going to be an in-depth interview. Obviously, I already know what's going on with my mans, and uh, you can just uh, watch us and see what's happening. If you do want to check out an in-depth interview, though, we do got the one that... Um, yeah, I think we got like on. we got like a couple of them. Yeah. I think on there. Yeah, one. I think that was like the first, or was that the second? Man, that that had to be like the dropped. first year that I was coming to the studio working with you. That we just sat down and like you dropped some questions, and then we did another one later on. I think with Tanner. Yeah, we did yeah. the Tanner one. Yeah. Um, so if you guys want to see like uh, you know how we got started and all the ins and outs of everything, you guys can check that out on on the Exit Door Productions YouTube page. Um, so anyway, I do want to, like, when I do these, obviously I want to educate and inspire, and I'm also telling my story. I want to hear your story. Um, we're not going to go so far back. But I would like to, uh, I always like to see, what's your recollection on how we started working? Like, what what did that look like to you, and uh, what do you remember about that? Well, I, I know we were already, like, friends on social media, and um, I would see you sharing a lot of my stuff. And... I remember seeing your profile picture, and you had a you know I had a picture of a guitar or something like that. So I knew you had something to do with music. So I you know I obviously followed you back or whatever, and then I seen you were from here, from you know where I'm from, and I you started doing the rap shit, and then I was like, oh shit, you know he's rapping too. You know at first I thought you were just you know a rock star and shit like that, but when I seen you start doing the rap shit, and then you produced, I was like, damn, okay, let me check out some of his beats, and then. As I went through some of your production, I was like, oh, all right, dope. And um, I think that's just how we connected from there. Was, um, I know the first track we did was the uh, Jay-Z, uh, that Jay-Z freestyle one you did. Do you remember that? Dude. You came over, we d it was a freestyle, and you were like, I just want to check out your production, see how it sounds. And oh, everything. okay, oh, yeah, 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 we did track, set up remember? that, yeah, we set up yeah. that uh, studio session in there, and yeah, mm -hmm. I was like, yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, because I didn't even rap over any of your beats yet. I was just, no, no yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. actually, man, I'll I'll tell you what. Um, so then, just so you guys know, we put out, we put out uh, two different projects, and those were just us getting started. We actually um, only put out one. Well, because we never put yeah, out Cushy. Yeah, Corridos. we never really so officially put we, that out. But. We linked up. We put out Cushy Corridos, which was one that we put out, and we have. It's that's just that's still available on all platforms right now you can get that on anything like on itunes spotify all that so cushy corrido is entirely produced by by jay right here man he made all the beats mixed it down and then we started working on cushy corridos too and we finished that project and then i don't know other things started happening you know other things started happening we started making other moves and i think we just kind of pushed that to the side and then we got another project done yeah. So shit, we've done like three projects together on top of like all the other little freestyles and stuff. Yeah. Um so we have those two albums out and then, you know, at that time like I was just still learning how to do beats really when I was thinking about it. Like when you you came over solo came over and now it's like now it's crazy cuz I can whip some shit up and it sound, you know what I mean? Like back then I was just trying to experiment and then those projects definitely helped me develop me because we based those off other songs and feelings that you kind of had already. So, um, with that being said, the new project, we're going to talk about that right now. Yeah. Just because it's a good segue between <laughs> the old shit and the new shit. But uh, the new project, 
we didn't we didn't really do none of that. We just uh, we created it together. Yeah, so you tell tell me about the process <clears throat> and how that was different between the old ones that we did well, before. I think we referenced a lot of a lot of uh, you know production we've already heard. So I, we referenced a lot of music. Like basically, we got the same type of feel, the yeah. same vibe. And that's how we collaborated. We weren't really in the studio writing music together, putting anything together. Um, You're saying on the old stuff. On the old stuff. Yeah. So then when we got into it on this new stuff, we were more like, okay, fuck it. We're going to work on the beat together, come up with the idea, write the song, then come back and drop it. And then we do it like that, sometimes get two or three songs done in a session. And um, I just, that pro- the, the process is... After we started working together the first time, I think everything just came together way better. Like the music was better, the the vibes and just man, the overall feeling was like dope. You know? Yeah, I feel like I felt more accomplished. You know what I'm right. saying? Like we, me and you, actually created this project together. It wasn't just like, oh, he's the beat maker and I'm the rapper and he throws me a couple beats and I go. No, we're like, hey, dude, this is the vibe we got on this song. Right. Or I might come to you with an idea and you would kind of help direct it a little bit more help arrange it so you know it was more collaborative than anything you know so yeah and that's you know that's the kind of stuff i like to do as a producer see the whole song shape yeah. up, see how see how it works you know um and then i feel more part of the music too you know? yeah because i'm a songwriter too so well i, I just look at it know, like but. like if you look back in hip-hop history man it's always about the mc and the producer you know what i'm saying like you got the dj too but like <clears throat> back in the era when they were, everybody was actually trying to make albums and make like you know these masterpieces that they were trying to trying to make they always had the backup of a strong producer with them you know and i always wanted that you know like i always wanted to be able to have a producer that i could like <clears throat> just go to and be like hey yo i need a beat like this and they can whip it up and boom we got a dope ass track you know anybody can get online and just shot beats right. you know what i'm saying yeah. fucking there's a million producers out there and you you going to you're going to find yeah. something you like right but to be able to to create something organically with someone else, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I like to work. I, f- I feel like I do a lot of my best work when I collaborate with people, yeah. you know? It's it's just, like, it drives me. Like, you know, be, back when hip-hop was, like, way more competitive where, like, you know, rappers on the track were basically trying to out-rap each other. Like Wu-Tang. That's, yeah, that's the type yeah. of shit that I was influenced on. So, yeah, I wanted to do a track with two or three other rappers because if they went hard, man, I got to come harder. You right. know what I'm saying? It was always, you know, nothing trying to disrespect the other artist, but it was more like, man, fuck that. Motherfuckers are going to remember me on this shit, you know? And I think that music has, like, strayed away from that, you know? Right. It, it's, it's, yeah. and, and a lot of times I catch myself trying to do what I think is popping right now. You know what I'm right. saying? I get lost in that sometimes. I think a lot of artists do. You know, they, they're not going to admit it, but shit. You know, you hear shit that's popular and you like, fuck, I want to get that same type of notoriety and that type of, you know, recognition. And if that's what's cracking, let me give them that. But if you're not that type of artist, then sometimes it comes off as really fucking corny and shit. Yeah, I also feel like if you're always chasing a wave, though, too, you never fully develop or create your own sound or your own style because you've changed so many times or try to jump on so many different new things that you can't never really get good at it because you kind of, as soon as you catch up to that wave, you got to try to jump over to another one. And that that can get you as an artist, you know? Hey, and a producer, shit. You I'm, I'm going to keep it all the way 100, though. The, the whole fucking reason I started rapping was because I wanted to represent for, for Mexicans. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was my main focus. was like, I didn't give a fuck if anybody else liked my shit. But if... Other other Latinos, other Hispanics rocked with my shit and said, "Hey, yo, you shit's dope." Then I felt like, "All right, cool." You know what I'm saying? I got the, I got the approval of my people. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that was that always inspired me. You know what I'm saying? Like I always was gonna be like, "Yo, fuck it." You know, people don't like the titles and shit. Like I don't want to be labeled as the Mexican rapper, but fuck it, I'll be the best fucking Mexican rapper. Right. You know what I'm saying? And ain't yeah. nobody gonna fuck with me. And I always had that mentality. You know what I'm saying? Like if nobody else fucks with me, if my people rock with me. Then, then I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. then, then I, I'm representing for them. I'm their voice. You know what I'm saying? I'm holding it down, and everywhere I go, I'm gonna represent that. So that's what inspired me to get into music. You know, because I, I heard some of the older Latino rappers, like the Kid Frost and the Conejos and all these other artists. When I was a teenager, discovering new music, these are artists I came across, 
and that they were representing, you know, Brown Pride shit like that, I'm like, oh, that's fucking dope. They're they're talking to me. You know what I'm saying? That's something that I related to. And I wanted to emulate that. You know, right. I wanted to be that person. You know what I'm saying? And I think over the course of, I mean, shit, I put, I put out my first official project in 2005. There was a group project called Mas Buscados. Two other dope ass artists with me. One he rapped all Spanish, called him Ese Pelon. Another homie from Texas called him Smoke Dog. And uh, we came together just off the strength of us all being Mexican rappers, and we're like, "Fuck it, we're gonna make this group, Mas Buscados." Put it out, and this is back pre digital streaming, internet shit. You know, internet was just you know starting. People right. were starting to see the opportunities that was coming with that, yeah. but. We put out this Mas Buscado album, and this is where you could still go to a fucking mall with 50 CDs and sell them bitches for $5 a piece. You right. know what I'm saying? It's like boom, 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 boom. And people would buy them. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't hard to get somebody to buy your CD, but we would specifically target younger Mexican kids or younger, you know, Hispanic kids. They'd be like, yo, check out the CD. Check out. If they didn't have enough money, fuck it here, take it. Right. Take it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Go check it out. And we put out that CD, and... You know what I'm saying? This is no fucking, you can't go post something and share something on right. Facebook at the time. So just like word of mouth, people were like, yo, we rock with your music. We rock with your shit. And I'm like, damn, it's fucking dope. Like, you don't fuck. I don't give a fuck if anything else ever happens. Like, shit, people like our shit. Right. It's, it's dope. So as we put that shit out, people were starting to ask about me. You know, it's like, yo, who's this dude rapping out here? Because... Um, Belon rapped all in Spanish, you know what I'm saying? So if you didn't understand Spanish, then you were, you know, understand yeah, how, how dope. There, but he was sure. dope, though, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, the shit he was saying was right. fucking, he was killing it. But I would come with, like, you know, try to spit my shit, and I would try to incorporate English and Spanish together. And uh, people would start asking about me, you know what I'm saying? Like, the guys that produced my first project was, you know, like, yo, let's do a solo project. Put out the solo project, same thing. Did everything official. Mixed, mastered professionally, all original beats, um, fucking artwork, everything. And we sent it out and got it pressed with the barcodes. And my thing was like, all right, if I'm going to do this shit, then I'm, I got to do my, I got to set my shit apart from everybody. And all, at that time, all you had to do was get a barcode and real CD cases. Right. And you were already set apart from the guys that were printing up all their shit and doing all this Print stuff it at up, home. give you in yeah, the jacket, so, give you that janky you shit. Know, yeah. I came from I came from that era, you know what right. I'm saying? I came from that era where you, you you could do you know, do it yourself, but it better look official, you know what I'm saying? Because if it looked corny, you know what I'm saying, then that's how people judge your music. Oh yeah. 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 You know? I mean appearance, I mean, it's, appearance to this day is it's like that, you know. Yeah. But yeah, appearance is everything. If you if somebody gives me a CD in a sleeve and it's handwritten. I'm just like, man, this is how serious you take your music. Exactly. Like, that's exactly. not. I mean, I understand doing what with what you have, right? But I think uh, I credit that to you out there. You know, touching the hands and inspiring the kids, and you know, know who your target is. You know, so exactly. that helped you for one. For two, I feel like that's helped you even to this day with your networking and understanding that you go out there, shake the hands, meet the people, you know, one fan at a time type See, thing, you he, know. Here, here's the thing I think that, like, separated me from, like, a lot of the people at the time that were trying to do music, that I was always prepared for a no everywhere I went. Mm -hmm. Prepared for a no. But I was not afraid to ask. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of motherfuckers get too big and they, you know, they're not humble enough, you know what I'm saying, to reach out and be like, yo, you know what I'm saying? I see you got this going on. What can I do to, you know what I'm saying, right. to, to be a part of that? And not clout chasing, not, that, was, that was putting in work. That's networking. Yeah. And another thing is I wasn't afraid to travel. Yeah. Man, if I got to go do a show and, you know, I, I remember a time when I, when I, would, when I was started rapping. And I was like, yo, like, how serious can this be? Like, you know, motherfuckers, I'm just rapping in my room, writing raps and recording on a fucking karaoke machine. And then, like, when you start putting music out and it, you start reaching people, you never know who you're going to reach. Right. And I've had it to where I've had, like, hardcore fucking gangsters, you know what I'm saying? Not from around here, from out of state, that's got out of prison and wrote me on a social media and said, hey, bro, I, I came across your music and... Bro, like, I feel that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, to me, that's like, you're touching somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're, 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 
your your music is actually like sparking an emotion in someone for them mm-hmm. to to take the time, you know what I'm saying? Be like, yo, I'm gonna write this dude and yeah. tell him, hey, yo, I checked out your shit and it was dope. And when I was in there, it helped me. You know what I'm right. saying? And I'm not saying that I've done that to a million motherfuckers, but I know damn well I've done that to at least ten people. And if I could continue to do that shit, bro, that's all I'm trying to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I do. Everybody wants to make a million dollars off their music. Right. Everybody wants to do that. But I think that that it's more impactful if you touch people. You know what I'm saying? Because that shit holds... I mean, the money's going to be gone, but that yeah. person always going to fucking hold on to that. I mean, I know to this day when I put on some music, I listen to shit that made me feel a certain way 15, 10, 20 years ago. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Brings you back. It right. takes me yeah. back. Yeah. And it, and it, and it makes it, you feel a certain exactly. way a certain time. Yep. I do the same thing. There's certain... There's certain CDs. Actually, uh, on the Ad Rock podcast, we kind of talked about that too. Um, so, let me ask you about. Uh, you know, we kind of talked about. You know, you know who you're targeting and what you were doing it for. So let's talk about. Let's move forward a little bit. Um, let's talk about SKM. How'd that come in? Because we can kind of segue from the networking and then just kind of tell us how that relationship and what's going on with that. All right. Well, first off, you know, none of that shit would have happened if it wasn't for Capone. You know, for those of you that aren't familiar with Capone, man, Capone to me is like, he's like one of the the godfathers of, you know, of what people look at as being Chicano rap. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'll tell you right now, there's a lot of people in our, you know what I'm saying, in our genre or whatever you want to call it, that don't like that label. You know what I'm saying? But Capone embraced it. You know what I'm saying? He embraced that label. And to me, like, he embodied everything that was Chicano rap. You know what I'm saying? His yeah. style, the type of rap he did. So, for one, he's 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 an OG. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well-respected underground, you know what I'm saying, Chicano rap artist. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been to so many places with this fool, and the love that he gets from the fans, I mean, you've seen it firsthand. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was You know like, what I'm saying? Like, they love this dude. Bro. Oh, yeah. And so... Rightfully so. He's a cool ass dude too. So shout yeah, out Capone. Yeah, shout out Capone, man. So basically, man, I was always using Instagram. I get on Instagram and I, I film myself rapping to the camera over something I just wrote or something I recorded. And um about man, man, about five years ago, I reached out to Capone and wrote him, Hey man, I've been a fan of you for years. I really like to work with you. And he fucking wrote me back and was like, oh, man, I appreciate that, but I'm retired. I don't make music no more. Like, fuck. The only reason I reached out to him, though, was because he's a Chicano rapper and I like this shit, but he had ties to Michigan. Oh, yeah. So I'm yep. like, all right, cool. He's got ties to Michigan, this and that. Um, I reached out to him. So unfortunately, at the time, he wasn't. He was retired. I just happened to be rapping on uh, Instagram, and I... He his son created an account for him on Instagram. Started putting his music up, so his son was like curating his shit. Mm. And um, his son came across my video of me rapping, and I was rapping Michigan and shit like that. And you know how Capone told me he's like, hey, so you know my son said, hey, yo, check out this this artist, man. He's kind of dope, and he reminds me of your shit. You know, like kind of yeah. got your style. And he's from Michigan, and, my, and Capone was like, man, what the fuck? He's like, ain't nobody from Michigan rapping like that. You know. Right. You know, and uh, so he wrote me a letter, checked out my shit, wrote me, they wrote me a letter, he wrote me a message and was like, hey, yo, hit me up, here's my number. I was like, fuck, dude, that's just dope. So call him up, dude was mad humble. It was like, hey, man, came across shit, your shit's dope. You know, at this time, we didn't, you know, we, we didn't talk about doing music or anything together. It was just more like, hey, man, keep doing your thing. Yeah, it's just relationship and, building. Yeah, and, and then, you know, you know, a few days later, I get another text from him and he sent me some music that he was working on, new shit. He's like, hey, yo, check this out. Tell me what you think. I'm like, holy fuck, bro. It's like, it's like, you ever see that movie Rockstar with uh, Mark Wahlberg? Yeah. You know how he's like a fan of that band? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he goes to the show and the fucking singer gets all fucked up. And the next thing you know, he's the fucking lead singer of right. the band that he idolized. Yeah. Dude, I'd nowhere on that fucking level of Rockstar, but it felt like that. I'm like, oh, shit. A dude that I fucking looked up to and like, like bumped his music... Is asking me what I think about his shit. Fucking dope. So we just built a relationship through, you know what I'm saying? Just chopping it up, you know, talking about music and this and that, what's going on. And um, one thing led to another, he was doing a show in the Midwest. And I was like, 
he's like, hey, you want to come to the show with me? Blah, blah. Meet me out there. Right. So we went to Chicago to do this show. It's the um, show with Quinto So, Latinos Unidos Quinto Tour. So? Yeah. yeah. So he went out there. We did that show. And um, it was uh, fucking dope. You know what I'm saying? Real cool, cool person, man. Like, introduced me to some of his people in his camp. And we just built a relationship from there. And, you know, we did a couple tracks together. And uh, next thing you know, Conejo comes to the picture. Okay. For those that don't know Conejo, man, Conejo is like, man, I, man, I refer to him as like the Mexican Tupac. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he's a legend in the Chicano rap. That's all that's got to be said about him. Go look up Conejo. Check out his music. This speaks for itself. But Conejo gets out and does a show in Atlanta. And like I said, I wasn't afraid to travel. So I'm like, fuck it, I'm getting a ticket to Atlanta. I'm going to go meet Capone out there and meet Conejo. And went out there and met Conejo. Uh, some homies from Atlanta, shout out to La Firmenza, the homie Moy. They was all out there and just showed me mad love. Nice. And it was just, you know, yeah. everybody just came together, man. Right. It was just yeah, the yeah. right time, you know. And, yeah. um, you know, we have Raza for Life going, which was uh, Capone's label. And uh, once Conejo got out, man, they just decided to bring everything together. And I had the situation with Raza for Life, and that merged all into SKM. And, you know what I'm saying, with... Uh, you know, with, with Conejo's approval and everything, man, we all joined the label and, you know what I'm saying, that's what we represent, Sinister nice. Kingdom music and a lot of shit's going to be different from now on, you know yeah. what I'm saying, we're going to put out, you know, projects and we're definitely going to hopefully reach a, a bigger market, you know. Yep, that's definitely the goal I know this year. Um so uh, the cool thing about this whole uh, link up is now you have the opportunity to do shows multiple places all over the United yeah. States. Basically, uh, so I know this summer or this well, probably since about last year, right? Well, it was about I mean, winter when you were traveling last year. Yeah, with well, the, well right? over the course of the year, man. Fortunately, we've been you know Cornell's been getting booked, and with him getting booked, he's been putting me on as one of his opening acts you know so we definitely we've done what chicago new york which was fucking the shit dude come on i went to the bronx and did a show you know what i'm saying that's awesome the bronx never fucking ever thought i'd ever be fucking seeing new york right and here i'm going to rock the fucking show with two fucking legendary chicano rap artists and and go in there and fucking do my thing like man dude like this like all shit that i put into the universe fucking 20 years ago. Right. And it's happening now, and it's just, like, crazy to see it all, like, come together. And that, that whole whole thing about, like, believing in yourself, you know I mean? You got to make moves to make it happen. But if you believe in yourself, man, like, all the shit that you want will come your way. You know what I'm saying? You got to fucking, you know, you, you might not always realize when the opportunity is in front of you, but you got to be able to fucking see it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, and if you don't, I mean, shit. If, it, if yeah, I didn't you gotta post be that video, scared not to do it. You know what I'm saying? You got to be able to take that chance and say that this is what I've always believed in myself for. I mean, yeah, at know? the end of the day, Jay was all about coming together with the right people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, everything that I did led up to, you know what I'm saying, meeting Capone and Conejo. And then, you know, working with those guys and being able to travel and network and expand my network, you know what I'm saying? And, and be able to make moves, you know, not just because they got a show, but because... People want to fuck with me too, right, like, bro? That's that's what it was about. You yeah. know what I'm saying like it's like you know, I show them that I'm a that I'm be able to hold the torch. You know what I'm saying? I can keep the torch going and and hold down SKM and you know and stay in my lane and, and put out dope music. You know what I'm saying? And, and and represent the right way. Like that's my main goal. You know? Nice. So what uh, out of all those shows that you did all all across the United States over the last year, what was it New York that was your favorite one or any highlighted ones that you really enjoyed more than others? I mean, we did one in Ventura, California, which was dope. It was my first time in California. Shout out to the homie Predict. I mean, the homie held me down, you know what I'm saying? He showed me a really good time, gave me a little quick mini tour of the valley out there. Oh, and nice. So, I, you know, I mean, it's a toss-up. I mean, I can't say that I have a favorite one. It's just being able to be in those places and do what we're doing is just like man like bro just like gratitude I, for that right I, I i can't take it for granted you know like that's the biggest thing like i appreciate it and it's like real like fuck man like there's a lot of people you know i don't give a fuck if i might not be the biggest known motherfucker but nobody else from over here was doing a show in new york right nobody yeah. else was on that plane with me out in cali right you know, and and I went there and I represented for my city, I represented for my brand, 
And, you know what I'm saying? It's all about networking. You know, it's all it's about. Yeah. So um, I actually got the opportunity to go to Detroit, and we did that show. It was a, it, it, some interesting circumstances that got us there with that <laughs> whole being up all night. Yeah, that was that was a wild ride. But uh, I had a lot of fun in that show, and it was nice to meet those guys. So I actually got the opportunity to hang out with SK, the whole SKM camp. Well, most of them, obviously, they're uh, representing with Capo. And uh, so, yeah, that was cool. That, that was a good time. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely a f- Hopefully I can do some more, um, get with you on some other out-of-state shit, uh, out-of-state ones here soon. That would be awesome. I mean, so. my my main thing, though, is I want to bring them here. I yeah. want to bring them to, like, you know, like Grand Rapids or something like that. Like, that's my next my next uh, goal. Yeah, probably, probably won't be able to do anything like that until, like, January with everybody's schedules. Right. But, yeah, that's what I'm going to try to do. So, um we went over the SKM stuff a little bit. Let's um let's talk a little bit about the new album because it is our album. So um, let's let's leak a little bit of info. It's, we're not quite there yet with it, but it's real damn close. So yeah. what are some highlights? What are some things? What would you like about the process? And uh, what's your insight on it? Um, well, the new the new album that we're gonna drop is called Elevate. It's a dope ass fucking album. Um, everything produced by you. But the I I like it's just the, our approach to it, how we approached it was way different than the first one, you know. And then we made it like, I mean, with content too, like some of the stuff we're touching on and talking about is not like a little bit different than what we were saying on the first ones. I mean, we still got that gutter street shit, but right. at the yeah. same time, you know, we try to show our versatility as you know, what I'm saying producers and artists, and not just mm-hmm. give you the same song, you know, what I'm saying right. remixed. Yeah, but um, no, just the working with you, man. Like everything's been fucking dope. I mean, you're really easy to work with, and you know, I appreciate you taking the time and and sitting in here in the studio with me and and recording my shit, and you know, taking time and mixing it, making sure it's just right. You know, you don't just send me no bullshit. You right. Know, you know, we're like, hey, no, I'm not happy. I mean, shit, some of the shit you sent me the first time, I'm like, yo, that's fucking dope. And then you're like, here in my email, I got like two or three more mixes right. of the same song. <laughs> Which one do you like? Uh, I heard some I didn't like on it. So you know, I'm, you're you know, you're, you're critical of your shit, man. So at the end of the day, like. I know whatever we're gonna drop here is gonna sound dope. You right. know what I'm saying? Like I don't ever leave yeah. here like, man, uh, it's an that. Like at the end, it's, it's on me to fucking write some dope shit. But at the end of the day, if the beat ain't hot and if the shit don't sound good, ain't nobody paying attention to it. But yeah. well, uh, the new album it's called Elevate. We're gonna shoot the uh, first single uh, video for it here pretty soon. It will be out early 2020. Yeah. Um, we are waiting on a couple features. We ain't even dropping names or talking about that yet. I will say though, uh, we are there's uh, t- what two or three songs that were taken from uh, Cushy Two because we we got oh yeah yeah I think it's low. two of them two of them yeah 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 so two tracks from Cushy Corridos Two we're actually gonna put on Elevate yeah and one of them is uh, the man with Capone. No. That, well, yeah, we got the man, but that ain't put out. Don't, we put out Load Up. Yeah, that's out, but I'm just saying the uh, Capone's going to be on. Yeah, the Capone's on out. That, yep. that, that uh, track That track is mean. That track goes hard as fuck. So, um, But the video, we're going to shoot the song that we're going to shoot the video for is uh, about that business, right? That's, that's No Limit. Oh, No Limit. That's yeah, the I, first I, one we're yeah, shooting. Yeah, no and limit. Then we're talking about that one. Yeah. Um, next but yeah so we got a few ideas for some videos for that that'll be coming real soon and we are going to get the process going but in the meantime you just dropped a mixtape so say some, a little something about that real quick um i got the mexavelli mixtape and um i figured that the i mean the easiest way for me to put it out and make it real accessible to people is to put it right on soundcloud you know what i'm saying you can listen to it for free on there but also i made a playlist so you can go down there and download the whole mixtape so like in the meantime while we're working on these albums you know what i'm saying that the, the the album shit, that's me and you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm I'm at the crib sometimes. I got my little studio in there, and I'll throw some mixtape shit down. And that's the Mexavelli. The Mexavelli series is going to be just straight mixtape, just straight rapping. The shit that me and me and EDP are doing is songs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're making songs. Right. So, I mean, in the meantime, just to keep everybody, you know what I'm saying, hip to what's going on, I'm going to hit y'all with the Mexavelli. So we got Mexavelli 1 out. Um, I probably got like... Halfway done through Mexavelli 2, we sitting on Elevate, and then we got 
cushy corridos too that might drop as a surprise project or something like yeah. that. But at the end, we're, we're gonna hit you with everything, man. But we're working, man. That's the biggest thing is we got we got music. We just gonna get it to you in the right manner, you know. Yeah. And we also, if you guys haven't seen, um, you should check it out. I'll probably put a link in the bottom too with the uh, bars video. We just dropped one. Actually, we named that song "Elevate." Uh, the song came together really fast. He, uh, Tony had an idea, came in here. He said, this is kind of what the idea is for the beat. I think I made the beat uh, probably 20 minutes, Dude, maybe. That, that was like minutes. the fastest session we had. He uh, loaded up, or I plugged in the mic, um, flipped a couple bars because he wasn't real sure. He had a couple verses. But we might finish that track too, right? We might, oh, yeah, I, it's going to be a whole song. Else. Yeah. It might be whatever, but we're trying to drop some content, just some bars behind the scenes. We did a little Halloween thing just to let you know that was my idea. He didn't like it, but <laughs> he still did it. He, it was he dope. It was uh, dope. I yeah. ain't going to lie. I mean, my yeah. son is like a huge Chucky fan, oh, so okay. he's like learning right. the lyrics. Yes, I just I just want to do something different, man. You know what I mean? Because everybody puts out songs. Everybody puts out this, and it's kind of like something that people can relate to. You know what I'm saying? Just sometimes you got to have fun with it, too. You know, and that's kind of what I want to do, fun. Plus, you know, just getting better with the video editing and the lighting and just trying to figure everything out because that's always a process, you know, because I don't know shit about none of that, bro. Hey, you know? bro. I mean, <laughs> shit. Like the video and all that, I'm just learning that as I go. So the more we fuck with it, the more we can, you know, make shit that actually looks decent. So We're learning. We're learning. Yeah. yeah. And that's what it's all about, man, you know. That's what this podcast is about, too. Uh, not only educating, hopefully, people that listen to it or being inspired by it, but also we're learning as we go, too. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm learning from you, learning new shit. You know, we're together all the time, but, you know, it's cool to uh, under understand, you know, what you do it for and why you do it. And it's, sometimes it's, it's, we don't talk about that it's shit. It's like I'm know? Batman and you're my Robin. <laughs> That's what it's like, bro. Just, you know, you're... you're <laughs> Get the little Robin suit on, making beats in here. And like, <laughs> that that's a good analogy. Um, so, as as on that point, before we go on to what's next, and uh, I'll tell you what, bro, we ain't gonna go like on and on with this thing because I also want to say something. I know I said something about Ad Rock during these podcasts that we'll probably Shout do some out other Ad Rock. Uh, we'll do some other little segments, you know, uh, with Ad. Because him and I talked about kind of talking about some metal stuff and yeah. doing some, I've, not necessarily podcast, but um, I, I talked talk about doing some too. stuff with I can talk metal too. <laughs> come on, man. But uh, Cabo's going to come through and we're going to talk about some topics too. So we're going to yeah. still create content and we're going to do lots of different stuff. So you're going to, you're always, if you see EDP, you're going to see we're going to be making content. We're so. going to have a podcast and all I'm going to talk about is the dopest Chicano rappers of all times. So I could put you so, guys up onto some shit you were sleeping on. That, that's good. And, and we can pay homage to to that. So. To that genre. Yep. Genre. It's going to be EDP's Mixing It Up presents... Maxavelli's... Um, hold on. I had a, I fucking forgot, bro. When I got here now. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see. Anyways, we don't have to title it right now. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of on the spot. Right. But uh yeah, we'll we'll be doing some other content. We'll be throwing some other shit out there. Um before we go on to like what's next, you know, what what's next for Capo, what are we looking at in twenty twenty? I know we talked about the album, but before we go into that, one quick thing, uh just to give a little educational and inspiring uh section of this, what advice would you have to maybe some upcoming rappers? Um, what are, what are some important aspects? Maybe some things you wish that you knew when you first started that could possibly help them and get them jump started in the right direction. If I mean, knew. man, it's just number one, go hard. You know what I'm saying? Make dope music. That's that's number one thing. Yeah. But I mean, at the end at the end of the day, man, just fucking invest in yourself. You know what I'm saying? I mean, pay pay and you know, pay for that beat that you took off YouTube. You right. know. Pay somebody to make sure your video looks dope, you know? Like, throw a couple dollars into your shit and, get, you know, have something that you're proud of to put out, you know? I mean, now it's, from from the time where I came out and was putting shit, it's, it's changed, you know what I'm saying? Like, these kids got everything they need right there, you know what I'm saying? Right to their disposal. Take advantage of that, you know? Like, just educate yourself on shit, you know? Learn, 
learn what's going on in the game, you know? Like, but at the end of the day, be yourself, man. Don't be your favorite rapper, okay. you know? And yeah. I think that's what a lot of these rappers do. And that's why the game got to where it's at because, like, nobody wanted to be creative no more. At the end of the day, we came from where it was a fucking the worst thing as a rapper to be told you sound like somebody else. You know, like yeah. just be like, listen to what everybody else is doing and then go the other way. And then that's how you fucking, you know what I'm saying? You, you make your mark, you know, you get the people that are rocking with you to follow you. You know, that's, that's the, that's my best advice. I okay. mean, if, if I, if I would have knew what I wish I would have knew is that nobody's going to sign you. You know, yeah. Like yeah. I, I was always thought there's like, man, there's this fucking check with my name on it waiting, and all I gotta do is put out a couple of projects, and somebody's gonna scoop me up. I mean, let me tell you a quick short story. I there was this other Mexican rapper, right? Well fucking known. I'm not even gonna say his name, but he was well fucking known, right? And when I was younger, I was a fan of this dude. I'm like, man, this dude's fucking dope. All I gotta do is get him to hear my shit, and he's gonna sign me. No fucking questions asked. I don't got to do no shows. I don't right. got to put them out. <laughs> he's just going to think I'm so fucking dope. He's going to fucking sign me. Man, this motherfucker came and, I mean, he was cool. You know, he showed love. But, you know, I could just tell this, this dude ain't signing anybody. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he ain't giving out fucking regular deals. And I, I came from an uh, era where I was, like, delusional about that shit. I just thought, man, it just you get underneath that one artist, he's going to take you under his wing and give you everything you need. And boom, you're on does not happen it's a fairy tale so don't believe in that shit well <laughs> even nowadays uh independent is the way to go anyway i mean in, most labels won't sign you unless you know how to build a fan base you know so um my advice and it's something we kind of talked about before um on this podcast but for me it's consistency it's like what we're doing now, finally. I feel like we're being consistent with content. We're being consistent with music. You dropping mixtapes, us trying to put the album out, and then just keep moving, playing a show. Um, you know, there's other things that you and I have to try to get on and be consistent on, um, you know, as far as when it comes to building the fan base. But I just see this, like, you know, people post something on social media, and then they go quiet, and then it's like, okay. What's going on? You're not consistently posting. You're not consistently putting out music. You're not consistently putting out content. Like, that's the world we live in now. If you're not constantly fucking putting some out, hustling, you know, letting people know that you're still out there, you it's easy to go away. And I just don't see that consistency with a lot of people right now. And that's that's my advice. You got to be consistent. You got to practice every day. You got to fucking work your social media. You got to work on your crap. I mean, it goes on and on. And oh, on, yeah. But, I, I mean, mean, a prime example of that is Cornell. I mean, that fool was consistent. Yeah. I mean, I can't remember how many albums he put out, but he got out. I mean, put out five albums a year. You know, I mean, that's crazy. That's work. You know, that's consistency. That's, yeah. You know, and he's forever feeding his fan base that is just straight underground motherfuckers that rock with his shit, you know? And, you know, that that that's definitely inspiring to me, you know? And he just did it off of just putting out project after project after project after project. And it's like, Damn, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, definitely inspiring. Consistency is the key. Yep. So, um, real quick, we're just gonna say, uh, what's what's next? What's what's 2020 looking like? Wrapping up for you, and um, where where are you going for there, man? Well, definitely gonna put out the new album, like at the beginning of 2020, coming out, uh, drop some more visuals, and then uh, hit you with more projects. You know, we're definitely got some more shows lined up. Those are to be announced, but. We got some more shows coming up, working on those, and just definitely just stay consistent, man. I mean, you're going to keep dropping dope shit. Cool. So you guys hear it there. Um, any last words? Any last thoughts? How do we follow you on social media, bro? Um, yeah, mainly, man, just follow me on Instagram, man. You hit me up on Instagram at Tony Capo underscore SKM, and okay. you know. All right, dope. So uh, stay tuned with EDP. Appreciate you guys checking out this episode, um, episode four, mixing it up. Hope you guys got some value out of this podcast. Appreciate y'all listening and uh, much love to you guys. Peace. They say you too old to be next up. I'm still grinding and running them checks up. My style is so sick, need a checkup. I'm just trying to see green like some letters. Threw us to the walls, but they fed us.